For those of you who don't know me or haven't gotten a chance to meet me yet, um, I am Michelle Gatta. I'm the Director of Admissions at Archbishop Carroll. I am also one of the volleyball coaches um, as well. So I am repping my Carroll volleyball um, attire tonight for you. Um, we have a panelist of some really great students, um, a parent rep and also another administrator at Carroll. And we're all here to talk to you um, just about uh, what you know, makes Carol Carol and what makes us, you know, so great in our minds. So I am really happy that you could join with us tonight. Just a couple housekeeping things. Be sure that you are muted um, the whole time. And um, there is, if you hover over the bottom of your um, screen, there's a Q&A box or even a chat box, whatever is easiest. Um, you will be able to ask us questions um, as we go along tonight. So if you think of something and you want to ask um, before we open it up for the Q&A, please drop it in there. I will read the questions and um, shoot them out to the panelists as we go along. But uh, without further ado, I will let our students talk uh, first and introduce themselves. Uh, so I'm gonna start with Mia, um, Arpea, and Mom, who is also here. Um, and they're going to talk to you guys a little bit about their Carol experiences. Okay, hi everybody, I'm Mia. I'm a junior at Carol. Um, so I participate in ACTS, which is Archbishop Carroll Theater Society. Um, I also do golf, and I'm also a part of Patriothon, which is our um, dance marathon for CHOP. Um, I, my favorite thing about Carroll is I love the amazing community. Everybody's so friendly and nice, and everybody's just welcoming. Um, I chose Carroll as an eighth grader because I loved the theater program. We have an amazing theater program with amazing moderators. Um, and my advice for you guys is to be open to new places and new things and new friends. Awesome. Thanks, Mia. Mrs. Arpea, what can you add for some of the parents out there tonight? Hi, I'm Lori Arpea. I have Mia, who's a junior, and I also have another daughter who graduated, and she is a sophomore in college. Uh, I love Carol because my kids love Carol. And we are not from Pennsylvania, so choosing a high school was not as easy as it might seem, not really knowing the ins and outs of all of the high schools around here. But we did our due diligence and went to many open houses at the time. Um, and my kids just fell in love with Carol, and I was happy that they found a, a great home and a place where uh, they can be themselves and they met people, uh, teachers and friends that make them feel at home as well. And they really have had a great time there. They've been involved in many things. Um, as Mia said, she plays golf. Um, they've also, my kids also did tennis, they did acts, thon. Um, they've been involved in many other clubs at Carroll. And I think by, getting yourself involved in high school that helps you to find your group and helps you to um, really enjoy your experience. Awesome. Thanks, Ms. Sarpea. I'm going to go over now to uh, JT. He is our student council vice president. Um, looks like you're coming back from soccer or some practice, JT. So thanks for being able to join us. Uh, why don't you talk to the eighth grade families next? Hi, uh, I'm JT McNally. Uh, like Ms. Gaddis said, I am student council vice president. I play baseball, basketball, and soccer. I'm also a part of the THON committee and the pro-life club. I went to St. Margaret's School. Uh, it's my parish. Uh, the one thing that I love about Carroll is it's easy to make friends. Everybody's really outgoing. And there's always something for people to be doing, whether it's a club or it's a sport. Um, it's like a big family there, and, and the faculty are great. So um, that's really what I love about Carroll. What advice would you pass on to an eighth grader who you were sitting in their seats four years ago and now as you, you know, look to colleges, what would you uh, share with them? Uh, definitely do not stress. Uh, high school is scary. When I was a freshman, it was very scary to see all the upperclassmen um, in between classes and just all over the school, but everybody's really nice. Uh, they're always there to help you. So just don't stress get your work done, 
it's it's a lot of fun and it's it's a great community of the loving people that are there and just have fun with it awesome thanks jt uh next up uh how about ann hi i'm annie i'm a junior at carroll um i'm in i do oh no you're cutting out ann can you hear me Hmm. All right, we'll come back to Ann. I think she's a little frozen. And just check your Wi-Fi if you're on Wi-Fi. Reagan, why don't you go while Ann figures out what's going on? Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Reagan. I'm a junior. Um, I participate. Um, in a, I'm at the Carroll Girls Soccer Team. I help out with, like, student ambassadors and open houses and things like that. And I'm also looking to participate in CSC, which is Community Service Corps this year. Um, my favorite thing about Carol um, was a lot, but I would say kind of how diverse it is in the sense of like, there are so many things to choose from at Carol. It's not like you don't have like just sports or just like the theater. There's so many different clubs and things to choose from. I've never met anyone at Carroll that feels like they don't have a place or activity that they can participate in. So I think that's really cool. Um, I chose Carroll as an eighth grader because my sister who's now in college went to Carroll, but um, it was actually a tough decision because a lot of my friends uh, went to like private all girls schools. So I was definitely looking for that, but um, I think Carol was definitely the right choice and it really does have everything that you could look for in a high school and my advice to the eighth graders would probably be don't be afraid to like immerse yourself in more than just one thing um, definitely as a freshman it's scary to get involved and I know as a freshman I only like wanted to be on the soccer team and like that was like a lot for me but if you can get involved with as much as possible because everyone's so friendly and open to helping you that you can make so many great friends and be a part of so many different groups and activities in Carroll, um, starting as the lower classmen and you'll hold those friendships throughout all of high school. Awesome, thanks Reagan. And why don't you try again? Can you hear me? I can hear you, I'm just, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Do you want me to start over? Yeah, <laughs> start over. Okay. Um, I'm Annie. I'm a junior. Oh no, she's frozen again. Sorry about this, everyone. Sometimes it happens with our technology. And you're frozen. That's okay though. I'm gonna move over to Joy though, um, because Joy is a freshman. Um, and she is, you know, just real fresh out of, you know, only four weeks at Carroll, but Joy, why don't you kind of talk to the eighth graders, some of them, you know, you might know from grade school and just, you know, what you've experienced so far and how you chose Carroll. Hi, I'm Joy Wallman. I'm a freshman. I'm going to be playing field hockey for Carroll. My favorite thing about Carroll is the people I was very intimidated coming into the school because I didn't know anybody. But as soon as I stepped into the school and I found my group, I wasn't nervous anymore. I chose Carol as an eighth grader because both of my brothers went there. And also I didn't want to follow where my friends went and I wanted to branch out and meet new people. And my advice for eighth graders would be not to follow where your friends go and look at the actual school instead of just being comfortable with the people. Awesome. Great advice, Joy. Um, Father Mark, um, our newly appointed campus minister, but it's been at Carroll for quite some time now, um, wanted to jump on this one because um, one of the schools here tonight is very close to his heart. So Father Mark, why don't you uh, do your thing next? <laughs> so welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you all here. And um, so a lot of our students have, have you know, said at the end of their talk, you know, why they chose Carol. Well, 
I'm kind of the opposite where Carol chose me in a sense that I was sent here to Carol. I didn't get to pick uh, the high school I got to go to. Um, and originally I thought they had told me, um, I guess this was about two years ago uh, when Father Spez was here, who was the former campus minister who's done a phenomenal job here, who's now at St. Philip near I, he said, well, you'll never get sent here with me because they know we're friends. So the talk was that I was going to be sent to Bishop Shanahan, which was my, you know, alma mater where I attended. So that's where I had planned to go. And then May came and I got the phone call and they said, you're going to Archbishop Carroll. And I still thought I heard Bishop Shanahan. So I had to adjust um, to go into Archbishop Carroll because the only thing I knew about Archbishop Carroll was um, they used to beat us really badly at football on Thanksgiving when I was at Shanahan. So that my only memory of them was beating us by like 30 points. So I knew it always had a great reputation for athletics. But when I arrived here, what I found out was, you know, even though they do call me coach father, it's my kind of official title here. Uh, we, we're so much more than just a high school, you know, that has sports or a high school that has theater, you know, or a high school uh, that has a great, you know, science department or math department. Really, we're a school that has Jesus Christ uh, at its core. And that governs and leads and drives everything we do. And I know a lot of our students uh, can speak to that because I know how active they are in our faith life. You know, we begin every day with prayer, you know, just like every other high school, every other Catholic high school. Um, but our real focus is not forcing everybody, you know, to pray or to believe this. It's really providing an environment where the students can, and you most importantly, can develop that relationship with Jesus Christ. So before each lunch uh, service, and maybe one of the students can talk about it after uh, finish, we have a lunchtime prayer service where students can gather in the chapel and really focus themselves, you know, on God, because that's what is going to be our driving force each and every day. Everything we do, whether we're on the baseball field, the stage, the football field, the field hockey field, the lacrosse field, or what have you, is always centered on Jesus Christ. And I've, you know, it's one of the things that I've tried to make apparent that no matter where you walk in this school, you're going to see a cross or a crucifix to remind you of why we are here to begin with. Why are you sent to a Catholic school? It's because you wanna help your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the biggest investment that you'll ever make in your life is that relationship with God. And everything we do at Carroll is to, is to help you in that relationship. So that's what my primary role is here. Um, it's not coaching, even though everybody thinks it is. I coach football in the fall, and then I'll be coaching uh, tennis in the spring, hopefully. Um, so I'll be looking forward to that. Any tennis players out there? Um, but everything we do um, is diverse. And it's not a competition, you know, from my eyes, because as a Catholic priest, you know, I'm going to be at Carroll, but eventually I'll be back at a parish one day. And I hope that all of you choose a Catholic education because at the end of the day, my biggest concern is that your relationship with God um, becomes fruitful. But I, all I can do is speak to what we do here. We're the only high school to have 90% participation on Kairos. And I don't say that to put other schools down. I just show you that that's how alive the faith here is at this school. Our lunchtime prayer service can have anywhere from five to 15 students that just gather at their own. I don't push them into the chapel and force them to pray. They do that on their own. It's led by the students. I'm simply just here to put you in a position that allows you to become um, not just a better Christian, but just a better neighbor, a better brother, a better sister, a better son, a better daughter. So that's what our campus ministry is all about here at Carroll. Thanks, Father Mark. So well said. And why don't you try one more time before I go? I know sometimes the Wi-Fi gets spotty at home and everything, but why don't I do want you because um, you have been a student ambassador before. So see if we can get through to you. If not, no worries. Thanks for jumping on. Um, I'll start from the end, if that makes sense. Yep. So, once again, I'm Anne. I'm a junior at Carroll. Uh, my best advice, I was the only one from my grade school to go to Carroll, so I would definitely say branch out and don't go where your friends are going. 
Okay, um, you sound good now, so keep going. <laughs> I chose Carol as an eighth grader because my brother goes there, or went there, he graduated, he's a sophomore in college now, but I loved the school when I walked in. It's so fun. It still is. It's the biggest, like, most heartwarming community, and it's not like you're not going to school where your friends from grade school don't go. You still, you're still friends. You still keep those connections because you play them in sports when you get involved and you see them like time and time again. Um, I participate in field hockey, lacrosse and CSC and yeah. Awesome. Well, great advice. Um, so as you guys can hear from all of our students um, who talked to me and, and father, Mark and Mrs. Arpea as well. Um, the biggest point that I, and this is my fourth or fifth now night of, you know, these virtual visits and every student panel says the same thing about the community at Carroll and how it's unlike anywhere else. And I do have to echo that as well. This is my third year at Carroll and I came from working at two other private schools um, before this. But when I walked in um, to Carroll, I even felt, you know, the the difference in our students and our faculty and our staff um, in the building itself. And um, I do pride our school on that community. Um, a couple other things you might have heard um, some of the students say is that their brothers or sisters, you know, went to Carroll and their legacy families at Carroll. But in admissions, and for those of you um, who have seen our brochures or, you know, who have done a couple admissions events now, our, our slogan is leave your legacy. So yes, we do have a lot of legacy families that come through Carroll and they're very proud to be Carroll families. But what I tell families and what I tell students are, you know, if you are the first in your family or if you are the one kid coming from your grade school, um, like some of these guys said, um, you're leaving a legacy at Carroll too. And that's the kind of student that we want, you know, is to leave something behind for other families, for other students to be able to experience. Um, you know, in many years past and not just at Carroll, but, you know, at other schools doing grade school visits, um, you know, the the funniest thing that I, you know, ever heard someone say was that they started a club at Carroll and they started it actually as an eighth grader sitting in a school visit. They asked, you know, the representative um, from Carroll at the time, do you have this club? And, you know, they said, oh, no, you know, we don't. But if you come to Carroll, you know, we'll help you start it. Um, and lo and behold, that kid went to Carroll. And then all of a sudden there was a culinary club at Carroll um, because he, you know, went up to our student um, council and our assistant principal for student activities and said, you know, I was promised this and I want to make it happen. I want to leave my mark at Carroll. Um, so can we do this? And they did. Um, so that I always think is the, you know, one of the most ironic and funny things that I've heard, um, you know, in working at Carroll, but it also just shows you what kind of a community, you know, we are, like the kids said, everybody, you know, wants you to be involved. Everybody wants to help you be successful and do the best and be the best that you possibly can. Um, so I always do like sharing, um, you know, that story and saying you don't need to be a Carol legacy family to leave your legacy at Carol. Um, before I open it up to questions, and if you do have questions as I'm going along, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box or in the chat box, whatever's easiest. I do want to talk a little bit about um, the admissions process since that's why we are really here tonight. Um, at this point right now, we have 233 Carroll um, applications from our eighth graders, um, which is awesome. Uh, our application's been open a little over two months now, and we're more than halfway to our goal of applicants, so um, that's pretty great, but it's not too late. So if you're sitting on tonight and you haven't applied yet, that's totally fine. Um, the application is open um, all the way through the springtime uh, to get, uh, I guess, preferential or early decision information in regards to acceptance or merit scholarship or um, a grant or financial aid. You do want to target the November 30th deadline, though, um, to make sure that your application is in and it is complete. Um, to have a completed application, you do need to upload your seventh grade final grades um, and your most recent standardized testing scores, which I know for you guys is sixth grade because of everything that happened, um, you know, with the pandemic and the quarantine last spring, and that's totally fine. Uh, two ways of doing that. 
You can actually upload it yourself if you have access to uh, that information. Mom and dad should have, you know, maybe copies of report cards or scores um, uh, at home. Or if your school is one of those schools that does want uh, to send everything to us directly still, because that is um, usually the common way in the years past, but uh, with school admin that's, you know, starting to change, that's fine. Just please make sure that your school does send them electronically to me. Um, we don't want any hard copies um, since you won't have a hard copy file until you do choose Carol. So please be sure to make uh, your schools aware to send them electronically if they're sending them to us. Um, we do still have two scholarship tests available. I just mentioned merit scholarships. Um, the last day to sign up for the October 24th uh, test is on Monday. So if you haven't signed up yet and you want to, um, please make sure you do. If you can't take the test on the 24th and you still are interested, there is one more day available, uh, November 5th. That is an after school test and you can sign up for that all the way through November 2nd. So um, please make sure that you, you know, do sign up for our test. Uh, the last couple things that I want to talk about um, are the virtual, other virtual experiences that we have. Um, like I said, for those of you that did hear me at the very beginning in the chat, there is the virtual experience tour um, at, that we have at Carol that was just put together and that will be on our website live through Saturday. Um, so you can click on that later tonight um, or tomorrow or whenever you have a chance and kind of um, it's a virtual experience in that it's interactive it's not just us talking you know at you you can choose what you would like to hear about um, and kind of go from there um, the other points that are uh, virtual are um, our uh, virtual shadow day which our student council president is working on and that will be able to be accessed on our web website um, later this week so um, the archdiocese unfortunately has uh, suspended shadow visits for the fall so we can't have you guys on campus but we're hoping to be able to do so in um, the winter and in the spring but until then you can get a taste of a day of the life of a carol student um, with our virtual shadow experience and then the last thing that I do want to talk about is our walkthrough day that's coming up on Saturday. Um, we were allowed to have one event, um, you know, from the Archdiocese guidance, um, as long as it was, you know, very COVID protocol friendly. Um, so we are having a walkthrough day if you are interested um, and would like to walk through the school with a guided tour. Um, it's not to the extent of an open house. It's really just kind of to see the building and the facilities and what our classrooms look like. Um, so you can sign up for that still. Uh, there are some time slots available at the end of the virtual experience uh, tour. Um, if for some reason you do go to sign up and all the slots are taken, please make uh, sure you let me know because if we do have um, a lot more interest, we will try to petition to get a second day, um, maybe for a couple hours in November as well. So um, just keep that in mind. And again, back to hopefully in the winter and the spring, uh, we can welcome you guys back on campus um, a little bit more. Uh, all the information that I just, you know, throw out, I was throwing out to you right now um, is available on the pandemic um, admissions information page of our website. It's the big C kind of, um, I guess, well, like our, my C on here, um, on the main page of the admissions tab, uh, you can access everything that I just said um, if you, you know, are unsure of something. Um, but with that being said, I will open, um, you know, our Q&A session up. We have about 20 minutes ish, 15 minutes left. Um, the students are here to talk to you. So um, if you do have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A. It really could be about anything. Um, you know, some of our kids mentioned, you know, clubs that they were part of, um, ACTS, Archbishop Carroll Theater Society, Patriot Thon, uh, CSC Community Service Corps, Father Mark's here as well. Um, we have some athletes that are also on. So if you do have any questions about those things, please let us know um, if you have any questions about anything else. Um, that's why we are here tonight too. So I don't have any yet, but I will let you guys kind of ponder, you know, some thoughts um, and please let us know. Um, this is our Paya. While we um, are waiting to see if there are any questions, um, do you want to talk about anything from, um, you know, a parent association standpoint or anything like that? 
Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Scotta. Uh, first, I would like to say that I loved what all of the students had to say about finding their place at Carroll. And I think that also translates to parents. Um, again, we came without knowing anyone. My oldest daughter had no one from her high, from her grade school come. Mia had no one from her grade school as well come. So with that being said, you know, you jump into um, a group of people that you don't know, but they all have found a, a wonderful place there. And I, as a parent, also have found that um, I love volunteering and being a part of the different opportunities that Carol has to offer as a parent. And I have met amazing people. And um, we have done some great things at Carol through the Parent Association. Hopefully, <laughs> we can jump back into some and continue them. Um, I, I just want to do make a comment about um, us going into COVID last year and how, and if parents are concerned about schooling, my biggest thing last year was how seamless Carol made the process between going full-time school and completely online. I do not feel that Mia lost anything. Uh, I, as a parent, was very happy with everything that took place to make sure that the students were ready and you know, continued it through classes without disruption. Um, I am very grateful for everything that faculty and staff have done this year to also continue that. Um, and it's a lot of work to get these kids back into school and not, you know, it's a lot easier to throw it online and for it to be, you know, just virtual. But to get the kids in school and everything they've done, I want to say as a parent that I'm grateful for that, but I also want those parents out there to realize that, you know, they're doing a lot to make these kids comfortable and safe and stay healthy, but also not miss a beat in the learning process. Awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Arpaia. That was a great point to make too. Um, the Archdiocese has put cameras in place um, in our classrooms so that when um, the students are on their home days, they are actually still learning live, which I thought was pretty awesome too. Um, so we do have a few questions that have popped up. Uh, the first one is for me. Um, it's about scholarships. So I'll answer that one. Um, so in regards to scholarships, we do have a merit scholarship. Um, we do have an art scholarship and Joy is actually one of our recipients of the Nolan scholarship for the arts. So she might be able to talk to that a little bit. Um, those are our two main scholarships, merit and art. Um, we do have branded grants as well. Um, those are listed on the um, financial aid and scholarships portion of the Carroll website. Um, I'll talk about those and then I'll jump back to the, the art scholarship. Um, but our branded grants are for um, service members. Um, if your mom or dad or uh, as a parent, if you're on here and you are part of the military or a veteran or um, firefighting, police, EMS, any of you know the services, um, public service that uh, we do have, um, there is a grant for that. Uh, you can see what the um, requirements would be. Uh, we have a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout scholarship. So students, if you are a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout, um, you could also apply for that. Um, and then we also do have um, a, um, I call it our Catholic Identity Grant, and that is for students that are very, you know, sound in their faith, um, kind of like Father Mark was talking about too, and want to be a part of the faith life um, at Carroll. So those are our three branded grants. Our merit scholarships are based on the scholarship test that I'm I was talking about. Um, and then our Nolan Scholarship for the Arts is for our students who are interested in any kind of art, whether it's digital art, um, you know, musical arts, um, chorus, band, uh, theater. Joy, I know you got one last year. Uh, what, what did you have to do? Why don't you tell some of the eighth graders um, how you got that scholarship? So my scholarship was for performing arts. And what I had to do was I, my mom helped me and we sent in a video of me through during a show of me acting and then an audio, I think, of me singing. 
and that was how we what we submitted. I think it was just on a flash drive. Yep. And then, yeah, then that was it. Yeah, and you answered a couple of questions. Um, right. So that application will be live on the school admin portal for this class, uh, starting at the end of November. So make sure you do keep an eye out for that if that's something you're interested in. The last piece of that was about sports scholarships. Um, we do not offer sports scholarships at Carroll. We are part of the PIAA, which is our state athletic conference, and it is illegal for high schools that are part of the PIAA to give scholarships for sports. Um, there is another question though here about our sports programs. Um, I know, um, you know, we do have a few athletes um, here. Reagan, you mentioned how you wanted to be a part of the soccer team from the start. So why don't you start and just kind of give a little bit of background, you know, about, I guess, soccer, Carol, girls sports, you know, whatever you do want to chat about. And then maybe JT uh, can jump in too to talk about uh, boys sports. Um, so I have played soccer since I was little and I play for a like travel club team that's like all year round like outside of Carroll and so when I came to Carroll I knew that playing soccer would be something I wanted to do because I play for a team outside of Carroll and I actually like like my Carroll team like even more than I like my travel team and that's like a lot because I'm with my travel team all the time um it's definitely not just a sports team we do so much together outside of like actually playing your sport you definitely get the training that you're signing up for we at least for the girls soccer team we practice every single day after school um we sometimes practice on the weekends whoever can make it we do um something i've never done for soccer before we go in the weight room and we do like training too not just like soccer practice but i think I could speak for all sports. I don't play any other sport besides soccer, but I know that Carol in general with their sports teams, um, it's very involved, like outside of just your sport. It's more than just like sport team. It's like, you really do like become like a family with your sports team. And um, I know for the soccer, we did a like service project last year and it was a lot of fun. And Every team does, yep. Yeah, we did like bowling one day for like team bonding. And it's just, it's overall more fun than it is any type of stressful about sports, but you're still getting that like intensity that you would want for a sports team. Awesome. Thanks, Regan. JT, anything you want to add from a, a boys sports perspective or? Uh, yeah, kind of like uh, what Reagan said. And as I mentioned earlier, I play baseball, basketball, and soccer. Uh, it's great because uh, actually last year the basketball team got together one weekend and we, you know, we all hung out, excuse me, on Saturday. Uh, we went out to get breakfast and then we kind of just like hung out together during the rest of the day. So it was, it was like a great bonding experience that we had. Um, and everybody that plays the sport is just so passionate about it, you know. They, they always want to win and they want to have fun, which, you know, it's good to have the same mindset as everybody else. But um, this is actually my first year playing soccer. So I'm very excited to uh, try out the new sport. Um, get, basically, you know, what Reagan said, everybody's in the weight room at different times. But uh, it, it's a great it's a great community within a, uh, a, another great community. So the sports teams really bring you closer together with your classmates so it's, it's great bonding experiences with them and the coaches as well. Thanks, JT. And for those of you that do not know, we do compete in the Philadelphia Catholic League, which is one of the most competitive leagues um, in our state, um, as well as throughout the PIAA. Uh, Father Mark, anything that you want to add from an athletics perspective? I did until you just stole my point. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, I was... Um, from Bishop Shanahan, and I only brought, bring that up because <clears throat> when I was a part of that league, that was the chess bond. And I always thought, you know, that was a pretty tough league, and it is. Some of those, you know, I still remember my first game against Coatesville, I thought I was a big person. They made me look like a kindergartner compared to them, uh, some of those uh, linemen. But I, from my first year in the PCI, I realized it's just a completely different experience. Um, especially with some of our sports teams. Our girls' programs are absolutely phenomenal. 
our lacrosse team is insane. Uh, I think it's 20 consecutive uh, PCL titles. So everybody knows about Carroll lacrosse, especially um, our girls teams. Um, but again, with every sport, it's competitive. I know somebody even mentioned bowling. If we get bowling, PCL bowling will be the most competitive bowling sport. You know, it's just the everything we do is always a striving for excellence. And there's just a completely different atmosphere in the PCL than from every other league. And I can say that because I've played in different leagues and now I'm coaching in different leagues. There's no comparison between the Interact, Chet the Chessmont, the Patriot League, and the PCL. The PCL is one of the best leagues, not only in the state, but in the country. Um, so that's just one aspect that when you come to a school like Carroll, you're gonna, it's an added bonus um, that you're just not gonna get with other places. So always keep that. If you're a very competitive person, and again, that's a very, that's a, that's a very religious um, aspect as well, always striving to do our best, you know, you can keep that as a serious component to, you know, why you're choosing a school, you know, if athletics is just one of the many aspects that you're choosing. Thanks, Father. And um, I've competed for three PCL championships now. Um, and you've got a couple with field hockey and lacrosse, right? What's that experience like? Um, obviously, as an underclassman, when we, we've made it to the PCL both years to experience like a win and a loss, it really puts things into perspective for you. Um, so as a rising junior, you know, you just, you want it more and you want to be able to give back to Carol. It's something that you want to achieve so you can make your school proud. That's an awesome point. That was so well said. Um, so the other questions here um, have to do with class size. Um, so right now there's about 630 uh, students at Carroll. Um, there's about 160 per grade. Um, that's a little bit small for us. Um, we, you know, did have um, some challenges with the pandemic um, and just enrollment, but we are really on our way back up. We target anywhere from 175 to 190 in a grade. Um, in regards to our class size, um, it's the average is 24 to one, but with the pandemic right now, we can't have more than 17 in a room at one time. Um, so it is 17 to one um, at this point right now. Um, the other question that I did see was um, in regards to learning support. Um, it does make me very proud to say that Carroll is one of a few only um, schools in the Archdiocese that has an academic support uh, resource room and center. Um, Full-time staff in there, um, as well as help from the DCIU and a school psychologist. Um, so we do offer skills um, learning as well as remediation um, and even extra help um, in, you know, specific subjects with tutors um, as well as one-on-one -on -one with our um, director down there, uh, Mr. Freiberger. So if your uh, child does have any learning needs or learning support, um, we do accept um, IEPs and 504 plans uh, for review and uh, Mr. Freiberger will review it and um, go through it and tell you, you know, what Carol can do for your child. Um, for the most part, we can really support every um, IEP or 504 plan that um, I've seen at least, um, which is awesome, um, you know, to say because we do um, really want to make all of our students as successful as possible. Um, anything else that anyone has any questions? We have a couple more minutes. Um, I know Mia was talking about ACTS, um, our, our Archbishop Carroll Theater Society. Mia, if you want to maybe um, jump in on that a little bit. Um, and then I, like I said, if you do have any last minute questions, please uh, continue to drop them uh, for the next couple minutes. So Mia, why don't you talk about ACTS a little bit? Okay, so ACTS is a wonderful um, activity that you can participate in at Carroll. Um, it's my, I love, I love the community personally. We're like a big family and we're accepting to everybody and we love new people. Um, on a normal year, that's not coronavirus stricken. Um, we normally would do two shows, two musicals, one in the fall and one in the spring. Um, there are no cuts there. Are, so everybody gets in, everybody gets something in the ensemble or whether it's lead. 
Um, so there's opportunities for everyone. We have stage crew, which is like you can build a set or set design, painting, things like that. And we also have the pit, which is um, like the musical instruments. Um, and it's cool that Carol's students play in the pit, right? <laughs> everything is all student, uh, stage crew is students, pit is students, of course, cast is students. Um, I, one of my favorite parts is if you, even if you don't sing or maybe you just dance, there's things that you can just dance or if you don't really dance, you can just sing. Um, or if you don't do either of those, there's times where you can just like have like lines and talk or you can just be part of the, the cast and the family. Everything's a lot of student involvement and it's a lot of fun. And what was your favorite show so far? Oh, <laughs> my favorite show was probably Godspell. That was my freshman year. That one was a lot of fun. We did a lot of like um, audience involvement. So it was all like surround, we surrounded the audience. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Um, so I do have two more questions here um, that I can answer. So unfortunately, Carol doesn't have a JROTC program um, at school. Um, JT, I know you are, is JT still there? I think he might've had to drop off, but that's okay. JT actually is a volunteer firefighter. Um, so he is involved with that outside of school. We do have a lot of students um, who um, do participate in things outside of school as well. Um, so unfortunately, I can't say that we have a JROTC program at Carroll, but um, you know, again, any time that a student is interested in something, our college guidance counselors, um, faculty, staff members are so willing to help you, you know, achieve, you know, your goals and um, ex uh, exceed your expectations, but also succeed in um, anything that you, you know, do have an interest in. And then the last question here is about um, how many of our students actually go to college. Um, we actually send pretty much our entire senior class to college unless they are enlisting in the military or um, they are choosing the ministry life. Um, Father Mark, is anything you wanna add you know, about that um, regarding college and if a student doesn't wanna go to college, what you know, options? And I know we have had um, you know, some students actually become priests from Carroll, correct? Yes, and actually also bishops. So um, Bishop Coffey, somebody mentioned ROTC, uh, he just became the uh, auxiliary bishop for the military services. So even though we don't have an ROTC program, Carol is very, very uh, heavily represented in the military. And we have many servicemen and women who've come through Carol who've gone on to serve um, in different branches of government. Um, as far as you know, the college process or going into ministry, um, we currently have one student in the seminary, Greg Miller, who attended Archbishop Carroll. Um, actually, no, we have two. Uh, another one, who well, I'm not as familiar with him, um, Paul Boyer is also in the seminary as well. So again, that is a testament, not to me, that's a testament to Father Spaziel, um, the minister before me and the spiritual life and the faith life in the school. But also, we'll help you if there's ever an interest in religious life, to be a religious sister, uh, we help you in that vein. But from my perspective, especially also when working with you know, the sports staff, you know, when you go to a Catholic school, especially since you're paying tuition, we see that as an investment. And so we're going to make sure that you get, uh, as much as I don't like to talk business sense, that you get the biggest return on that investment as you want. And that's why we have higher academic standards than most schools. You know, we don't tolerate, you know, if you can get three or four, let's say failure warnings, we cut it off. Um, you know, at two, you know, we have a higher standard GPA if you're going to be doing any extracurricular activities. So there's a very, very heavy involvement, you know, from not only just um, the faculty's perspective, but the administration as a whole, that nobody falls through the cracks here, that if you want to go to college, Carroll is a fantastic school, a fantastic school to help you accomplish that goal. So if you want to go to college, Carol will definitely make sure that you not only go to college, but go to the college that you want to go to. Exactly. Um, and like I did say earlier in that chat where it um, does have the virtual experience tour link, 
um, you can actually hear from our director of college guidance um, right in that video too about um, Carol U as we call it, um, meaning, you know, we're taking our students to universities, but directing it to each individual student. So meaning you as the student. Um, there was a question about water polo. We don't have water polo at Carol yet, but our athletic director did start a bocce team um, and we do have fencing. So we do really welcome um, you know some more unique sports uh, so if you come to Carol and it's something that you would be interested in Mr. Quintos will definitely love to hear about it um, so with that being said if there's no more um, questions um, and if there are questions that you might not want to ask um, directly here tonight please reach out to me you know via email or even um, you know um, by phone later on um, I will be happy to answer anything for you um, and please 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 um, you know get on the Carol website and especially the admissions tab um, and um, just browse around. There's so much information. It will, will help you with um, everything uh, that you need admissions wise on, like I said, our pandemic admissions page. Um, so you are right in the heart of admissions season. Um, so there's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, you know, every time a parent calls, you know, I just have one quick question. It might sound silly and not a thing. Um, it's my job to help you get your child to Carol if that's where they want to come or even give you any advice or information that you need, um, you know, going forward. There was one more question that popped up. Um, it's about softball. Anybody on here a softball player? Girls? No? Okay. Well, I can speak to it a little bit. Um, Mike Lorene is our head coach. He's very, very active in club softball in the area. He's been around forever. He's fantastic. Um, his um, actual email is on the athletics um, website. So if you do want to specifically talk about softball questions, um, please reach out to him. Um, but our girls do well. Uh, we have a home field um, on campus. Unfortunately, last year, uh, they did not get to play. Um, so I can't speak to that. But um, playoffs are always a thing for our girls softball team. Mike does a really great job of training, um, like Reagan mentioned, with weight rooms um, and, you know, off um, season stuff as well. Uh, so please don't hesitate to reach out to Coach Maureen if you are interested in softball. Um, all of our coaches' emails actually are on our athletics page of the website. So again, like I said, browse through the website. It really has a lot of information. I think it's pretty um, well set up too, so it's, it's easy to, you know, access. Um, so thanks everybody um, for joining us tonight. I'm gonna end the session. Um, again, like I said, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, so thanks and we hope to see you at Carol very, very soon. And thanks to all my panelists tonight, you guys were great. So I will end the session. See you guys.